Hi, welcome to Easy Payroll Guide. My name is Karen Hutchinson, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to complete the IRS 941 form. This is the Employer's Quarterly Federal Tax Return. This form is due at the end of each quarter. So, for example, quarter one ends on March 31st. This would be due by April 30th. So, April 30th, July 31st, October 31st, and January 31st are the due dates for the IRS 941 form. This form is going to detail all of the tax liabilities for that quarter. This is how the IRS reconciles your W-3 forms. So you want to make sure that the information on this form is correct. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give you a scenario of a small business who had three employees. And I've taken the information from their paychecks and I've put them into an Excel spreadsheet. And this is something that you could do as well for your record keeping in order to help you to complete or just to check the 941 form. So I have three employees and I've included their gross pay for each employee, and then in the last column I've totaled the gross pay. So my total for gross pay is $25,465.27. I've also included in the spreadsheet the taxes that were withheld from each employee's paycheck. Now this is just the employee portion of the taxes. So I've included the federal withholding that I've included from each paycheck, the employee Medicare portion, the employee Social Security portion, and I've included the state withholding. The state withholding we're not going to need to use for the 941, but I wanted to point that out. This is only federal taxes that are going to go on the 941 form. So we are going to be using this portion, not the state portion, in the 941 form. Okay, now this is the federal withholding, so Medicare and Social Security, for the entire quarter. So this is what my employees have been paid for all of January, all of February, and all of March. No, I'm sorry, we're doing fourth quarter. So all of October, all of November, all of December. So it doesn't matter. For three months, these are the totals. Now, along with withholding and paying taxes for your employee, you also must pay an employer share of those taxes. So when you made your deposits, you would have multiplied the Medicare portion by two and the Social Security portion by two because the employee is paying half, but you're paying half as well. So as you can see here in blue, the Medicare portion for the employee and the employer are the same, and the same for Social Security. So these taxes were paid as well and will be noted on the 941 form. So in this red box here, I've kind of just summarized what we're going to be using for the 941. We're going to need the total gross pay that you've paid all three employees for all three months of the quarter. You will also need to know the withholding total and the total Medicare and Social Security paid. It will not be broken out by employee and employer on the 941 form, but you may want to keep those records for yourself. And then just the total that you've paid for the quarter and your deposits that you've made. And then I also just recorded the deposits that were made for October, November, and December as well. These three deposits should total the total paid right here. Okay, so now let's take this and let's look at the 941 form along with it. So this is the same spreadsheet, and we're going to use this information here in the red box to help us to complete the 941. So when you begin, the top of the 941 is pretty much just your personal um, business information and you want to make sure that you check the right quarter for which you're filing the 941. 
and then we're going to start with line number one. Line number one is just simply the number of employees who received compensation for the quarter. So in this particular example, I've paid three employees for the quarter, so I'm going to write the number three. Line number two is the total wages, tips, and other compensation that you've paid. And this is where you will come to your spreadsheet. And as you can see, I've paid a total of $25,465.27. And they've, there's a decimal there for you. Um, I accidentally put the decimal in, but you can use their decimal there. Okay, so for number three, it's the federal income tax withheld from wages, tips, and other compensation. So this is the withholding tax that you've withheld from the employee's paycheck. So that is this number right here, the $3,153. So that number we're going to put in here for the federal withholding. Okay, there's no employer match for federal withholding. That's strictly the amount withheld from the employee's paycheck. Number four says that there are no wages, tips, and other compensation subject to Social Security and Medicare tax. Then you'll check this line and go to line six. But we have paid um, Social Security and Medicare. So we are going to complete 5A through 5E. F technically. So 5A is the taxable Social Security wages. And again, this is not broken out by employer and employee. So we're going to include all the wages here that we paid. And this number is going to be the exact same as the total wages that you've paid. Because all of the wages that I've paid are subject to Social Security wages. So the $25,465.27 is going to go right here in column one. And then you would multiply that by the Social Security rate, which is 0.124. So if I multiply this number times 0.124, I'm going to come up with a total of $3,157.69. And make sure that you do multiply by that number and you don't just take this number that you've calculated yourself because there might be a couple pennies difference which we're going to note on this form as well. I did not pay any tips or my employees did not collect any tips so I'm going to go ahead and skip 5B. 5C is the taxable Medicare wages and tips. So again, all of these earnings were subject to Medicare. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same number, which is the total wages that were paid. And this time I'm going to multiply by 0 0.029. That's the rate for Medicare. And when I multiply, and again, make sure you multiply. Don't just use the number on your spreadsheet. You're going to come up with $738.49. And that's my Medicare portion. And as you can see, yes, there's a few cents difference. And that's okay. That will be reconciled here a little later. So again, I did not, uh, my employees did not collect tips. So I'm going to skip 5D. And in 5E, we're going to add column 2 from lines 5A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to add together the $3,157.69 and the $738.49. And when I add those together, I'm going to come up with a total of $3,896.18. And that is line E. Five F is tax due on unreported tips. And again, this is something that I don't need to worry about for this business because the employees did not collect tips. So line six is the total taxes before adjustments. And for this line, we're going to add lines three, five E, and five F. 
So I'm going to take my Social Security and Medicare wages and add it to the income tax that was withheld from my employees' paychecks. And when I add those two numbers together, I come up with $7,049.18. So that's the total amount of taxes that are due. Now, line 7 says, current quarter's adjustment for fractions of cents. And this is where we notice that our numbers did not exactly match the numbers on the spreadsheet. So here's where we're going to make up for that. Notice that we paid $7,049.16 through our deposits and the total tax due is $7,049.18. So there's a two cent discrepancy there and that's where we're going to note that two cents. So here we're going to have a negative two cents. We paid less, two cents less than what we're calculating on the 941. Okay? And that's okay. We're just that's this is how we reconcile it. So current quarter's adjustment for sick pay. I didn't have any sick pay that I needed to adjust. And current quarter's adjustments for tips and group term life insurance. That's something else that I don't need to worry about. So my total taxes after adjustments are going to be the seven thousand forty nine dollars and sixteen cents. So that matches, and you want to make sure that that matches the amount that you paid on your spreadsheet, which it does. So the total deposits for this quarter, including overpayment paid from 941X or 944X, this is basically how much money did you pay? And we did. We paid the 7049 and 16 cents. Okay, and that's if you made your deposits on time and if you have truly paid them, which hopefully you have. So lines 12 and 13 are the balance due and the overpayment. If you did not make these payments on time or if you still owe money, then this number would need to be adjusted and you would need to write the balance due here. If you have paid, then you're just going to leave these two blank if everything's paid and you've paid exactly this much, which is what you owe. If you happen to pay over the amount for some reason, then you can state that overpayment here, and then you can either have it applied to the next return or they'll send you a refund. Okay, so again, yours might be a little different depending on your numbers and depending on your payments, but this is the basis for completing the 941. Now there is another side, so if you go to the next page, don't forget to put your name of your business and your um, EIN number up here, um, just in case this page gets lost or something. If you, um, if this return is less than $2,500, then you would check here, but ours is not, so we're going to go down. And here's where you have to go on the basis of how you make your deposits. If you're a monthly scheduled depositor for the entire quarter, which means that you deposited your taxes using EFTPS um, at the end of each month, and you did it on a monthly basis, then you would put your tax liabilities here. So you would check this box, and let's just say, like I, I put down here on my spreadsheet, that my payments are consistent, my, pay, my employees get paid the exact same amount um, each pay period. So let's say that I owed $2,349.72 each month. That was my deposit, so that's what they're asking for here is your deposit. You would put that number for what you deposited for month one, and then the same for month two, and then the same for month three. Now your numbers may be totally different. You may have, um, if you pay your employees on an hourly wage, these would be different for each month, and that's fine. Just 
take note of whatever you paid for each particular month, that total needs to go here. And then when you total these three numbers, they must add up to your total liability, which again is the $7,049.16. So you must make sure that when you add these three numbers together, this total has to equal your total on line 10. Okay, and then you would go ahead and just fill out the rest of the form, which is just your information for your business. So that's the easy part if you are a monthly depositor. Now let's say that you are a semi-weekly depositor, which means that you are required to submit your deposits after each pay period. So let's say every two weeks instead of at the end of the month, you do it every two weeks after your pay period. You would fill out Schedule B. You would not fill out this section that we just filled out. Okay, it's either one or the other, not both. So if you make your deposits twice a month, then you would check here, and then you would go to Schedule B, and you would fill in Schedule B with the pay dates that you paid your employees, you're going to fill in your tax liability, what you owed for that particular pay period. Do not fill this in with the dates of the day that you made your deposit or the deposit amount. This is the day that you paid your employees and the tax liability for that pay period. So, for example, if you pay your employees, let's say on the 15th of the month, then you would put on the 15th of the month the tax liability that you owe, and if you paid them on the 30th, then you would put the tax liability that you owe on the 30th. Okay, so again, this is your tax liability on the day that your pay period ends, not the day that you make your deposit. Okay, so again, you're going to either fill out section um, schedule B or the back part two if you're a monthly depositor, but not both. Okay, so once you complete part two or schedule B and you sign your return, you are finished with the 941. And again, remember the 941 is a way for the IRS to understand how much tax liability is owed, how much you've paid, and then it, eventually it will be reconciled against your W-3 at the end of the year. So please make sure that you take meticulous records and make sure that you complete this accurately because if not they will come back to help you or make sure that you figure out where you've made your mistake and you don't want to owe any more money or, or be fined for this so make sure that you do it right if possible okay all right so that is your lesson on the 941 I hope that this helps you better understand this form